Hello everyone, I'm Dimitri with Hero Canucks. Yes, the same Dimitri, now just with a shaved face. But in this video, we'll be exploring the potential of future desktop PCs that are super compact. Uh, and, you know, as our desire grows for small and powerful PCs, it really has pushed the market to develop space efficient machines that still offer some DIY elements. While, you know, compact enclosures and PCs generally don't offer much upgradability, while on the other spectrum, we have larger cases, larger builds that offer plenty of customization. So where is that middle uh, to balance out upgradability versus size? And this is where my experience with the Intel Skull Kenyan NUC or next unit of computing begins. We'll explore the experiences with uh, everything from the basics to video streaming and uh, gaming and also some light productivity stuff and also everything in between. So let's get on with it. Now, I've always been curious about how I would utilize a small PC like this NUC, but as soon as it was in my hands, I knew it would serve me very well. This is a DIY unit, so the user will need to populate their own RAM, storage, and the operating system. And so while the NUC is $600 right now, by the time you have a working PC, the total price may be close to a thousand bucks. This definitely brings things into perspective because for that price, some buyers may approach it as a novelty product, you know, the tiny size being the main selling point. I mean, it's thinner than my pocket camera or the keyboard for that matter, and ridiculously smaller than my smallest ITX case that I currently have on hand, and that's incredibly impressive. Talk about portable standalone machine, which is just slightly larger than its own power brick. Even though there isn't a dedicated graphics card installed, this little unit has a quad-core 8-thread Skylake CPU, the i7-6770HQ, which is pre-installed, and consumes less than 100 watts. While that may not sound like much for most people, there is a reason why Intel markets this as a mini PC with full-size performance. That processor features Iris Pro Graphics 580, which should be adequate to play many today's uh, games at 1080p at medium settings. And also, the cool thing is, the user can select how how much system memory is allocated for that graphics processor. Inside we have two sodium slots with up to 32 GB capacity uh, and then two M.2 slots with 80 mm SSD supported. And I love how user-friendly the installation is. Everything is accessible once the bottom plate uh, is removed. And the cool thing is the screws stay with the panel so they don't get lost. And check out these installation instructions. They're clear, concise, well done. And I was able to assemble the NUC with its components in only a few minutes. At the front, you'll find a power button that's dimly illuminated in white, an SDXC card slot, dual USB 3.0, the orange one is for quick charging, a headphone jack, and a consumer infrared port. And this IR port is a key factor if you want to control the NUC with Logitech Harmony remotes or other infrared controllers. Switching sides, there's the power in, audio with optical, gigabit LAN, couple of USB 3, and a good array of display I.O., such as mini display port, Thunderbolt 3, and a full-size HDMI capable of 60 hertz at 4k and so this type c thunderbolt 3 here is very important for external gpu solutions and this can be added later if more graphics power is required the chassis is adequately ventilated there's a single blower fan with heat pipes coming from underneath the board and placement wise it's meant to lay horizontally like this there is no vertical position but there is a vase mount that can be used to create your own sort of all-in-one if mounted behind the monitor although on most monitors the vase mount is hidden by the stand. The top plate with the skull can be swapped out for a plain one if you're not digging the gamery appeal and it's on this side that you'll find the Wi-Fi antenna with dual band wireless AC and some proprietary connections. And so finally, let's get the NUC ready. I connected all the basics and it's a strange feeling having such a tiny PC on the desk. For productivity, it's perfect, and I can also see this fitting into a home theater environment that's also used for some light PC gaming. I got a 4K display connected, I could work on my Photoshop projects, the system has no problems handling Lightroom, and maybe this could serve as a video editing system, you know, on the go, but that's perhaps pushing it. But what's nice for these workflows is an 8-thread processor that does provide plenty of processing power. 
For my living room, I've been using the Eurocom notebook as the HTPC, which is a total overkill, so a NUC would occupy this position very well while minimizing the footprint and forcing me to buy a wireless keyboard. But 4K Netflix is gorgeous, absolutely smooth playback and no surprises there considering the processor and the GPU are both beasts for such a small computer, which brings us into gaming. And I was honestly surprised to what we could achieve here. Playing Overwatch at 1080p at low settings gives me 50 to 60 FPS. And I initially played with a tank hero for a slower paced character and give me an understanding of the Snuck's performance, but switching to a sniper class was totally fine. We're hovering in high 50s and I can aim well with that frame rate. However, less demanding titles are perfect for the Nuck. Transistor is one of them. It doesn't require much to run at 60 FPS. And if you're like me with a large indie library of games, it could be how you game in the living room. Dota 2 at 1080p with the best looking preset was between 40 and 55 FPS, which is fine, but lowering the quality gives us a solid 80 plus frame rate, which is nice for multiplayer. And then jumping into CSGO at 1080p again on low settings, our frame rate is hovering around 140 FPS, so it's totally suitable for competitive gameplay. And so it depends on how and what you play, and then the NUC could be a nice addition or even a substitute for a dedicated light gaming PC. And so to conclude this conversation, I legitimately think this would be an appealing product for POW users, provided you value the small form factor given the extra price premium. Now sure, you can upgrade the uh, M.2 storage and the RAM, which is a good thing, uh, but of course I can hear the argument of spending that money on a more powerful desktop PC, but the thing is it will never be as small as the Skull Canyon NUC. Also, the expansion options are quite good with an external GPU adapter if you require extra horsepower from the GPU side of things via Thunderbolt 3, the Type-C port here. Uh, you can connect a bunch of USB hard drives if you need more storage or upgrade the M.2 slot inside. It's a very exciting product and we'll be doing more testing plus comparing to competing products that are currently on the market and maybe even building uh, to comparing to like an ITX system that is similarly priced that we build ourselves. So make sure to stay subscribed. I'm Dimitri with the Hardware Canucks. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one.